welcome, welcome in the room. And we are live on Facebook. Ta-da! I love how fast <laughs> it is these days. It used to take like a whole minute. And now here we are. Happy Fierce Female Friday, everyone. Can you believe it? We're at the last so excited. Friday of the last Friday of Q3 is today. Ooh. Oh, wow. What a year. What a year. What a year. And, and we have navigated these first nine months so beautifully together. And today we have an amazing guest with us. And we're going to talk about something that we have talked about just in passing over the last couple of years. And so uh, before we dig into the juicy conversation with Alice, let's do a couple of things. Drop in the comments where you are watching from today, whether you're watching live or the replay. We always love to see where everyone is. Are you home? Are you at the beach? Are you in the mountains? Are you in your car? Uh, hopefully you're not driving if you're in a car. You know who you are. Um, and <laughs> we do know you. Uh, we have a couple of fun woman up updates. The first is a reminder for those of you who attended the Courageous Reinvention Workshops, you should have gotten your replay information on September 4th. So this is just your friendly reminder that those replays are there. There and they are waiting for you. For those of you that have been messaging us and poking about when the replays will be available to the general public, uh, that will be soon. However, this is again, another reason to always buy your ticket for the live event because they got it first. <clears throat> Just saying. All right. Second on my list is the wisdom session. And that is next Wednesday, the 29th, 2 PM. It is all on the life changing power of mentorship that is going to be led by Pat Heller and Aisha Allen, uh, Lupe Rui and Natalie Leon are joining us. So if you have ever wondered how to find or become a life changing mentor, join us next Wednesday get yourself registered. Remember, we don't host the wisdom series on the Facebook group that is on zoom so that we have a, a sacred space to have the, the conversation. So make sure that you do sign up for that. And then last but not least, least uh, we have the Q4's topics are up on the website. And so we want to make sure that if you have a leadership story that relates to any of the topics that you share it, at IamWomanUp.com slash share your story. So October is building a successful team. So if you have built a successful team and you have a story that the world needs to hear, head to IamWomanUp.com slash share your story. November is leveling up your leadership skills. So if you have mastered or are in the midst of mastering a leadership skill and you wanna be part of that conversation, share your story. And last but not least, December is leveling up your planning. So if you have a killer way that you vision cast your next year, please share your story with us. We'd love to uh, sprinkle your wisdom over the community. Uh, that's so uh, what I got, Sarah, how about you? I am so excited for the last quarter of 2021. Wow, that's amazing. Um, we have a lot going on at CAR. Our governor just uh, skirted a recall election and he signed into to action, into law, some really important bills that will help with our state's housing affordability, affordability, housing affordability crisis. We need more housing in here. We need it now. We were just complaining in the green room how... Um, how unaffordable things can be. And that's what these are. There's a lot of misinformation out there though. So I do want to, I, I want to encourage you, I'll share in the chat, some of the background about these bills. We are currently working on a Q and A for SB nine. Um, and that is lot splits in California. So it's very com complicated, complex information that our legal team is quick at work. We should have that by early next week. Um, and so we will share that out with all of our California members as soon as we possibly can. Also getting very excited here in California for our Reimagine virtual conference. It's coming up on October 5th, and 5th 6th, and 7th. And I am most looking forward to our conversation. It's Woman Up at Reimagine with Leslie Depper and I, but also we are interviewing Sherry Chris. Tanya Runervez and Sue Yanakun from the Really G Powerhouse Women team. Um, that will be on Tuesday, August 5th, 2.45 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's in the, it's in the um, 
it's all in the agenda. We'll post that as well. And it, it, we're talking about how to help, how, how uniquely positioned real estate is to help women rise. Um, we know that there were so many people that were, uh, so many women that were affected um, mostly by the pandemic, out of work, childcare issues. And I actually posted a podcast into in our group today. So if you haven't, if you haven't checked that out, please do. It's, it kind of sets us up for this conversation because yes. it's all about the, right. It's the, the opportunities that, um, that, that the, the world has to step up and buy women and, and buy women-owned products and women and, and yes, women the, owned picnic, the picnic items, the it's picnic, having to yes. picnic items that were, that were created by women-owned businesses. That's exactly right. Now I'm like, oh, I can't wait to go to the store next time and go, oh, who wants this? Oh, who wants this? <laughs> and you would be surprised that even though there is a woman's name on the products, like Annie's or Amy's, they are run by men. So mm-hmm. uh, it's intentional. And it also just, you know, it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to support and, and support women-owned business, women-owned brokerages, and, um, and kind of shine a light on what holds us back. So I love that. that would, that's pretty much it for me. I will post the link to reimagine in the chat. I will post the link to that podcast in the chat and I'll post the link to all the background on SB9 in the chat. Yay. Before, before we go to Leslie and what's tickling her, I heard from Melanie that although we can't discount the out-of-state realtor pricing for Reimagine, which is set at $45, we can um, get, we got a code for the non-members out-of-state for 20% off. Oh, Yay. Yeah. Right. So exciting. And that's WUCOM21. So we'll put that in the notes as well. So yeah. Hey, there's another perk for being inside the woman up community. (laughs) All right, Leslie, what's tickling you? What's on your mind? I want to um, emphasize one of the things that Sarah was talking about in terms of the reimagined conversation. And I just want to say from my perspective, it was it was out of the park, you know, it was an amazing, I just remember writing notes madly and being so amazed at these women who I, who I know, and I've spoken to in the past, some for a long time. And yet just the, 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 the concrete suggestions, you know, the outlook, the perspective that they had to offer. I'm not going to go into any detail, but I hope you'll listen in because it was, it wasn't just same old, same old. It was really dynamite. Um, in terms of what's on my mind, I have a Coffee and Conversations coming up on October the 13th. It's delayed a week because of the CAR uh, reimagine and, and business meetings, but I'm going to be speaking to Lupe Soto. And for those of you that were um, at the Courageous um, Reinvention uh, workshops, at the end of the very last workshop, there was a, an extended I don't even want to call it a Q and A. It was more a dialogue, and and Lupe got on and just you know Lupe and I are contemporaries, right? We've known each other well over thirty years, and you know her comment was something to the effect, "Isn't this amazing that we can have these discussions?" Because thirty years ago, no, we didn't mm-hmm. have the language, we didn't have the vocabulary, nobody was listening, and. At that moment, I thought, oh my God, Lupe, we need to talk. So we're going to be talking about, you know, one of my life lessons is it's never too late. (laughs) And in September, Women Up has been talking about mentoring, and we are going to be talking about how valuable it is to have mentors that are younger than you. And I'm looking at Sarah and Deborah in particular to help you navigate a world where you're an immigrant, you know, as, as, as good as you can be at all kinds of tools and apps, you didn't grow up with it. So um, I think it's going to be, I know it's going to be fabulous and I hope you can join us. So that's what's on my mind right now. Mm, I look forward to that. And I really did love your conversation with Lupe in, during the circle up. And so it's another reminder for those of you who purchase tickets to the actual event you actually have a replay to that. So it's like, don't miss it. It really is so beautiful. And it's such a great reminder. Um, and then last but not least, 
I want to echo what what both of these ladies have said about the reimagined conversation with Realogy. Uh, I was at Ulta yesterday getting something for my husband and I walked by and it was like, not your mother's like, and it reminded me like, this is not your mother's Realogy. And Ooh, yeah. Like <laughs> it's such a, like you want to come and listen because we kind of have given them the, over the years, the jokes, like the Titanic and how are they going to turn and make some changes? Woo! Listen in. It's a good one. Okay. So without further ado, Alice, yay. Let me read a little bit about Alice. Yay. Alice Meyerhoff Hi. is a versatile dot connector who delivers best in class corporate sponsorships for global mission driven organizations. Mm, that speaks to my soul. She is an inspiring sales leader and author who draws upon a deep well of corporate and multicultural experience to forge mutually beneficial trusting relationships for profit and nonprofit constituents. Alice is a collaborative partner who balances a boots on the ground approach with a strategic <laughs> mindset to grow entities, scale partnerships, launch initiatives, and generate a revenue. She is also a voracious learner who masters new industries quickly and has built cu uh, customer portfolios from the ground up in education, real estate, advertising, and entertainment. Alice was also one of our speakers. She talked about getting more women on boards last year at the virtual experience that we hosted on our private island where we danced with each other's avatars. Uh, welcome, 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 Alice. Thank you so much. Thank you so here. much. Thanks for inviting me. It's so good to be back. Alice, yes, you were here a year ago and yeah. um, we'd love to know how you been what's what's new it's been a year so tell us what are your changes what are you up to yeah well a year ago I was working at how women lead which is a nonprofit that supports women in leadership with a particular focus around getting women on corporate boards hence that being the topic of conversation uh, I launched a really cool program over there called get on board week um, they, they're doing it again this next month um, and it's a, if for anybody that's interested in corporate boards is sitting on a board, maybe wants to get on a board, uh, there's lots of programming for that. It's great. So that was a huge lift. Um, and I got a little burned out, so I left in May. <laughs> so, um, that actually has been delightful. I've been riding my bike a lot, doing some, I learned some watercolor. Um, so just really kind of enjoying my time with my family and uh, doing some contract work here and there. So I'm doing a little project right now with a higher education news nonprofit startup and um, helping them kind of figure out how to monetize what they're doing from a paid media perspective. And, um, you know, just doing little projects here and there. So it's been nice having a little space for myself. Oh. Can we dig in there just a bit? Because mm. I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering what that looks like in terms of an organization and, and what, what are the challenges? Because I know that paid media and can you explain a little bit about what that is? Cause we, we kind of know it a little bit in our, in our world, but it might be yeah. a, new, a new concept for our listeners. Sure. So this organization is largely funded or has been largely funded by foundations. So as you may know, the news space over the last several years has gotten pretty hammered. Um, you know, you maybe you see from your local news outlets, them kind of going, could you please send us some money and help us stay around? Um, you know, it's because the news has become free, essentially. When it moved online, everything kind of became free. So they've been really struggling with how to stay around. Um, this particular organization is interesting and doing something very innovative. They're called Open Campus Media. They're focused on um, higher education, but particularly how um, they're questioning a lot, like how is it serving communities and students? Um, you know, like it's pretty expensive to get a college degree and does it always pay for itself? No, it doesn't always pay for itself. So what all, and there's a lot of disruption in that space. I'll, I'll stop nerding out on higher education, but um, to address the question around paid media. So they've been getting foundation money because there's a lot of people that are really interested in keeping these news organizations around. Um, but they need to diversify their revenue and um, paid media, which means when people buy advertising um, and, they, and the readers see that advertising in the news, that's paid media or sponsored content. So I'm helping them develop 
those programs and and selling some of that stuff for them. Um, Alice, what I explain that well? We want to kind of get your perspective on is this whole mentorship versus sponsorship confusion. Yeah. <laughs> and we spent a lot of time talking really about both of them, you know, and certainly the value of having someone that can kind of show you the ropes and, and really give you advice in terms of being a mentor is, is critical, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's a formal mentorship or not. But it seems to me sponsorship is really a whole nother category. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on sponsorship and, and what it is, what differentiates it and how you go about doing it. Sure. So the big distinction with mentorship and sponsorship is that in a sponsorship environment, what's happening is the sponsor is using their social capital to promote the other person. So mentorship, you're, you know, you're giving advice or getting advice from a person. And that's, of course, really helpful. But in the other scenario, somebody's maybe making an introduction on your behalf or recommending you for a speaking spot or, you know, to be someone's agent or whatever, right? So they're, they're putting their neck on the line is a bit extreme because I think, especially for us women, sometimes we worry about our own social capital being compromised when we make these introductions. And I think we don't do it as often as we can. So, um, th but that's the big distinction is, is using your social capital to lift someone else up. Right, and it was interesting what you just said about women being hesitant to do, to do that. And I'm wondering where that, I mean, I hadn't really thought about that before. Mm. Is, that, is that really true? Is it just part of the women not being on the playing field? You know, I really am kicking myself for using sports analogies because they oh my gosh. Them, so you guys have got to forgive me. Like I'm channeling Gino Blafari right now and I don't want to do it. Hysterical. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's true. I mean, I've I've seen myself do it where I go, gosh, you know, I want to help this person, but I'm not, I don't really know. Are they that good? Is it somebody going to think poorly of me if I make oh. the introduction and then it doesn't work out? So I think, and, and, and this is just my guess, I think the reason for that may be, you know, we have to work harder to get where we're at as women, right? So that social capital is very precious, but really it, it doesn't cost you anything to make those introductions or to make that recommendation. Guys do it all the time. I mean, think about, think about guys on the golf course to go back to sports, right? I mean, they're like, <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll give you guy give you that guy's number. Or, you know, they don't even hesitate. And um, we, I think, we need to be more like that. Which well, I don't always feel like we need to be more like men. But all right, I'll Good be the one to say it. I'll be the one to say it. Uh oh. Uh, we, I think, uh, when women were getting into the boardroom, we were taught under the guise of the zero sum game. There's one woman allowed at the table, and it's me. And, and I think did that do, and, and the reality is, is that even if a guy makes kind of a crappy recommendation and the guy comes on, like he gets booted, but there's lots of other guys there to like cover mm -hmm. it up. But when, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, and so I think that we're, we are slowly learning the power of a collective at the table because we aren't always the only at this point. So we do have, we have our wing women and our wing men, those men who are like, man, it's so great to have a female's perspective at this table or some diversity of thought in general. And so they're on, they're already on the train. And so I think it's just those two camps are still kind of fighting a little bit. And so there is a level of um, you know, feeling like you're going to lose your social capital. And I remember watching this video, uh, I think it was like right at the beginning of the pandemic last year. And it was this, this guy who kind of reminds me of, oh gosh, what's the Virgin Atlantic guy's name? Um, Branson. Robert Branson. Rich Branson. Richard, Richard. 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 Yes. Yes. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. 
the he white hair guy. Reminded me of him, he like that kind of like to, recently. Yes, <laughs> just, just, yes. A, just a little, just a little tiny guy in the history, you know. Um, but it was it, they were talking about how even you know even in their circles, like somebody a guy will be making a really poor choice in words or making a joke, and no one says anything because they don't want to lose their social capital at the at the table, and that's just hanging out with a bunch of people having beers, right? Mm-hmm. And so. I think we're, we're slowly learning to build our confidence in that really, if our social capital is broken because we're bring, asking to bring another woman on, is that really the social capital we want? Well, I think it also perpetuates like this mediocrity, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't need to be just a bunch of just mediocre people like that that's, and that's the beauty of diversity right like yeah bring new voices it encourage more people to be a part of the conversation because what does that do it elevates the conversation yes mm-hmm. yes Hopefully yeah more people understand that you know i think for years they didn't feel like anything was missing if it was all white men at, at the table, right? The, that New Yorker cartoon with the young woman and all these guys sitting there. And it's like, tell us what you would bring to our company. You know, it's like, oh my God. So I yeah. think today there is, to my point earlier about how things have changed, right? That there mm-hmm. is a recognition that um, diversity is of val- tremendous value. Yeah. Well, it's been proven that when you have diversity on corporate boards, the companies perform better. I mean, right. yeah, that's that says a lot right there. Yeah. And if you think about the fact that, you know, if it's a, a company that's serving consumers of any sort, women <laughs> are half half of them, at least, right? Like we're half the population. These these boardrooms should be reflecting the community that they're serving. There was there was a an article, I don't know, it was maybe a year ago or so. Chipotle and a bunch of these Hispanic brands had no Hispanic people on their boards. What the heck? That makes no sense. And in real estate, it's more women. Chipotle. <laughs> what did you say, Leslie? I'm sorry. I'm, I think, I, I'm sorry. I think McDonald's owns Chipotle. <laughs> maybe that's why. Not even. Yeah, it doesn't come from the neighborhood. You know? Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. <sighs> Again, I, I think that it, it's, it is this full circle. We always come back to these statistics, Alice, when we have mm-hmm. these conversations, right? Like we know women control 85 to 90, even 95% of the home wallet decisions. We know that we make up at least, well, I think last time around, it was 51% of the planet was female, at least in that census. Mm-hmm. Real estate is 60 to 67% female. We're, we're a female dominated industry that's male designed. I mean, we know that it's consistently like flipped upside down and it's just chipping away at it. And I think that, you know, when you came to talk with us last year about, mm-hmm. you know, really like stretching ourselves and inspiring us to get on boards, you know, we've done a lot of work like inspiring women to get around the board table. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, and I, and I believe that one of the things I know that you, you were talking about last year and that we talked about even earlier today was having a sponsor is one of the key ways to get at that table. Right. And, and we're starting to see, um, you know, female investors or conversations around women and investing and the, the, position at the boardroom table and the cash, the, the, like the confluence of influence mm-hmm. right there. I really would, would love to kind of talk about. So if that first step is really getting that person who's going to talk about you when they're in there, mm-hmm. how have you seen, or how has, um, how have the organizations you've worked with guided us in finding the right sponsor? What does that look like? A lot of it has to do with putting yourself out there and making yourself visible and making, <laughs> which you're so good at, um, and um, you know, making your intentions known, what you're trying to accomplish, right? Like people can help you best when they know what you're trying to do. If you don't make that um, known to people, they don't understand. Oh, that would be a great connection for Deborah, or that would be. I should totally introduce this person to Sarah because, you know, they um, are trying to do this, and Sarah knows that really well. So a lot of it is, is being out there. I think groups like this, um, are great. Uh, and 
you know, one of the things that we would do uh, at How Women Lead, whenever we would have an event where we'd have a bunch of women together, uh, the introductions, people would introduce themselves in the chat and say like who they are and what they're trying to do so that, you know, if they're trying to get on a board, they would say that, let people know where their expertise lies. So I think, I think that's a lot of it, you know, just showing up, being visible. You know, that's the part I think there where, where many women get stuck there, right? Mm -hmm. I was going to ask that. Too. Yeah. Like yeah, it's like yeah. we, uh, okay. So I'm going to bring up Glennon and Abby yet again, because oh, I am obsessed I with them, <laughs> but they were, so they were, they were talking about, um, they, well, they had two episodes. One was kind of on body image and body confidence. And the other one was on sex. And th they were talking about, now don't worry, Sarah. I'm not. It just, did you see me shift in my seat? <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm not gonna talk oh, about sex. Whoa. <laughs> but what they were talking about is our sovereignty, right? So in the, in the world, when we walk out our door, a lady in the streets, a devil in the sheets, right? Like we're supposed to be very demure and keep ourselves down, not talk too much about ourselves. But then mm -hmm. there's also, we're supposed to like go out and tout and talk. And, and so there's this push and pull. It's like, how, how do we release ourselves from having to be um, proper ladies mm -hmm. while also claiming like our position as boss? right? Mm -hmm. Like but we can't room. win. We can't win. It, it feels <laughs> like that sometimes. And so I love, I love the idea of when you're hosting events and you're doing zooms, reminding everybody to, to like, it's kind of the law of contribution. How, do, how can I help you? Like, how can we help you? That's a great example. Um, we can implement that here at woman up hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. what are some other ideas? Like how else are you getting women out of their shell to tell their story? Yeah, I think you, mm -hmm you give them places to practice. Like this is a safe space, right? So if people are starting to do that here and they feel comfortable doing that here, it's going to be easier to do it when you're in a room full of uh, mixed genders or, um, you know, some other place. And it, this is going to sound like a really weird analogy, but if you've ever done like a self-defense class, like the first thing they teach you is practicing to say no, right? Because we're not used to that and it feels uncomfortable. And then saying it like, no, like get away from me. No, <laughs> just practicing that helps you so that when you're in that moment, when you really need to do it, it it's not so scary. Well, I mean, this, the situation's scary, but you know what I mean? Like you it practice, feels more natural. You know what to say. Yeah. Well, Sarah, doesn't that sound interestingly alike of the, the sharing pinata? Right. Well, no, the pinata. <laughs> I wasn't going to go there. I was <laughs> just saying like that we, you know, we have people ask us all the time. Well, like if you're all about equality, why don't you have men on your stage? Yeah. And we always say oh, like, yeah. we're, we are, we're the, actually the safe space where women can catch up mm -hmm. and that they can come on the stage and, you know, whether it's being part of a panel or a W3 or some way, it, it is exactly what you're talking about, Alice. It's that place where you can get the confidence. I mean, mm -hmm. and we have seen, like, like, I think about Sabrina and Kama at the, the very, every time I, ha I talk, talk about this, because both of them were like, well, maybe I can share. And now it's like, they're everywhere. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're like building their empires out loud. They're, they're hosting events. Yeah. They're emceeing things. Mm -hmm. And, and I, both of them say it's in part to the ability to practice here. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think now my mind's reeling, like, how do we get practice in this? Like 2022. There's also, it reminds me too of um, Mia McLeod. Mercado, who was on our first woman upstage back in 2017. And she said, you know, she talked about like being mentored and sponsored and wanting to give that back. And you know how many people reached out to her from our audience that she still has a relationship with. So it was that ability to, to, you know, broadcast the fact that that was one of her values and what she really attributes to success mm. and being able to give back to that community. And it's, it, and I believe it's the stories of every single building block of all these stories that it, that truly makes up the woman up community. Mm. It really does. And that, so that being said, what a great segue into, you know, what is your favorite story of how a woman has been able to find a sponsor and really use that to, to gain traction in their careers? 
So I have a story about somebody probably a lot of you know, which is Katie Lance. Oh, she's um, watching. She's watching. Oh, Katie. Yes. Katie. Um, I hope you agree with what I'm about to say. <laughs> 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 um, so Katie, I was working at Inman News when Katie interviewed and she interviewed for a marketing manager position and she was coming from a local real estate brokerage where she had been doing marketing. And um, I don't know, there was something about Katie. So uh, I hired Katie to come in and, you know, hiring and sponsoring, like it's all kind of related. Um, but the, the thing that I think really made it easy to be a sponsor of Katie is she was really clear about what she wanted to do. And she was kind of up for trying anything. So um, Katie, you might even remember which conference this was, but there early on, there was a conference where we had an opportunity to send somebody to sort of represent in the news and, and I think do some speaking even. And I think I had just had a baby and I was just like, I can't do this. Katie, would you want to go? She's like, sure. <laughs> and now look at her. And now look at her. She's, everybody, people are paying her lots of money to show up at these events and speak. And, you know, she's built a whole incredible business out of that. So, um, Katie, I don't know if you consider me your sponsor, but I consider it. She remembers <laughs> it. She definitely remembers it. Oh my gosh. She says, you sent me to Nashville. <laughs> that was Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. I have a little Katie story and I don't, I've never even talked to her about this, but I remember it vividly um, that I hired Katie to come down and spend a day with my staff to talk about social media. And I remember when she told me how much it was going to be thinking, what? That's way too low because I, oh. you know, had been bringing in all these other names for strategic planning and so on. And I remember telling Katie, you're not charging enough. Of course, the next time we wanted to use her, she was out of our budget. <laughs> and honestly, I was, I was absolutely thrilled, you know, because I think we do as women tend to not ask, and I'm as guilty as anyone, you know, money conversations are not ever easy for me. Mm -hmm. And, but I was really happy to be able to say you're worth a lot more than what you're, uh, you're, and this was many years ago, but I do remember it. This is okay. I feel like I've got chills. Katie and I have had conversations about what to charge over. We we've started our businesses at the exact same time. And one of the things that we've always said is it is, it's such, it's so refreshing when you send in a bid and someone actually says, wow, this is pretty low. Like, is this a mistake? Right. Because usually everyone's trying to get the best deal. And so I think that actually, Leslie, is a great example of a way that you can sponsor someone's career. That's, that's really like stepping in the mm -hmm. gap for them. Right. And saying, yeah. I see you and I see what, what other people are charging and you, you, you need to fix that. And because we don't know right? Most yeah. of us don't know. And whether you're in corporate, you're in your, don't supposed to, you're not supposed to talk about your salary. Or if you're in the consulting world and everyone's kind of like, I'm just kind of throwing stuff out there, seeing what sticks. So <laughs> I think that's an awesome, awesome example, Leslie. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Mm -mm -mm. Um, so I guess, are we at the stage where we're asking, um, there's no, not yet. To share. And I, I do want to say one other thing because Sarah brought up Mia McLeod, who is just one of my all time faves. And she also came and spoke to the CAR staff a number of years ago about leadership. And it's one of those things where what she said I had heard before, but the way she said it and her story hit me like a ton of bricks. And the takeaway was if you're going to be a leader, you need to be visible. You know, and it's, you know, um, uh, John is always saying, you know, if, if someone's, if no one's listening, you ain't got nothing to say, you know, <laughs> and it's really about stepping into that world where you're comfortable being seen, you know, that vulnerability yeah. that, you know, some people are going to like it, some people aren't, but if you want to make a difference, you have to get over it and be out there, you know, and I think for women in particular, that's, hard to do sometimes, you know, certainly for my generation of women, I think it's, uh, has been a challenge. Mm. 
I can attest to that too. Um, because I, I just shared this analogy with uh, some girlfriends over the weekend. And it's like, you know, the wolf, the, the leader of the wolf pack. Yeah. She is in the back, you mm. know? And yeah. she's like making sure all of her, her tribe, her herd is in front and safe. Yeah. And th- that's how I feel I am as a leader, but it doesn't, it doesn't square with being seen and being, you know, acknowledged and, and people knowing what I do, you know what I mean? Like it, that's, that's something that I struggle with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's where the sponsors come in. I think that mm-hmm. that's like, Right. It's, mm. it's where yeah. we in, per, in personal branding, right. In the real estate world for the last 10 years, we've been telling agents, like, tell your story, get your clients to tell your story, rate my agent for crying out loud. This entire co- company is all about testimonials and the consumer helping the agents tell their story. So the agents don't have to, well, we don't have like I mean, we have LinkedIn for testimonials, but, but having a sponsor who's, who's basically doing that for you is what is, is what we're talking about today. So I I have a question. How do we know when we're ready to become someone's sponsor? Like when, (laughs) when should we do it? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think most of us have opportunities to do it all the time. Maybe not all the time, but they're there. They're around us, right? Somebody says, you, there's, a, there's a speaking opportunity. You can recommend somebody. You think about where's their, um, you know, it, even those little things are important. Um, it's, it's that recommending somebody whenever you have an opportunity, expending that social capital that you have on behalf of somebody. It's, uh, it's important to do it. And if you can recommend a woman <laughs> because we need us all and, to be up higher. Well, I love that. I think it's, it's an important reminder, something we should write in our journals every day. Who can I sponsor today? Who can I spread? I mean, Deborah does this all the time for me. So who can I, and, and for the community, who can we shed, shine a light on? Right? Yep, That's yep. the whole point of shine a light on her. So it's mm-hmm. so important. It's right. such an important reminder, Alice. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that yeah. the reminder. Yeah. We, we all have the ability to do it in some way, shape or form mm-hmm. in our world. And, and because we know we've had the conversation about women aren't always the first to ask, mm-hmm. but when something is asked of them, they will gladly answer and or volunteer or whatever is going on. Right. Sometimes to their detriment, they'll say yes too much. Right. And so as, as leaders, what we can do is we can ask, what are you trying to accomplish in Q4? Yeah. What are you, like, what are your Q4 goals and how can I help you? Uh, and it's, I do that a lot in, in my circles and it is really interesting. I'd say about 50% of the time they're like, oh, that's a really great question. I'm like, right. Oh, do you have a really great answer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put some thought into like, that. I know one. I'm good at asking questions, but are you good at answering the question? Mm-hmm. Right. And so us yeah. also knowing what it is that we want is, mm-hmm. I mean, it's funny, but it's not right. Like I seriously, like ladies and gentlemen sit down this weekend and think, what do I want in Q4? Like, what is it that you want? And then write a list of the people that you think are, are, are capable of helping you. And Deborah right. has, and uh, here's a shine a light on Deborah. <laughs> She has a great, she has a great exercise for no, for finding out what you want and how to articulate it. So (laughs) thank you. (laughs) There's some sponsorship. There's some sponsorship. Oh my goodness. I was just thinking of um, a a time that I had a, a sponsor and I don't know that I even really realized what it was until this moment. And that was, um, this woman, Kari Anderson, who speaks quite a lot about relationships and communication, she was doing consulting for Salesforce and um, had recommended me to be a blogger for Salesforce, which was amazing, an amazing opportunity. And I'm so grateful that I said yes, because it just led me down a a different path. Um, And I actually ended up writing a book and 
trying a whole bunch of different things. And, you know, it was this confluence of somebody going, huh, they need somebody. This person seems like they could do it. I don't know that she'd ever seen anything I'd written, to be honest. I don't know why she thought I could do it, but she made the recommendation and, um, you know, kind of changed my life. So. Wow. Mm. Wow. It's time to say thank you to her. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Kari. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, and that's a, that's a great reminder too. You know, it, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that at the wisdom session next week about how to be a great mentee, but it's also like how to be a great sponsor, 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 like, <laughs> what is that word? Mm-hmm. Like to be Sponsory. sponsored, Sponsor, receiver of sponsorship, to be sponsored. Sure. Let's say that like <laughs> be the one who's, who is supported like part of what we can do is, is to give back by at the very least saying, thank you. Wow. I, yeah, you did this amazing thing for me, but we can also, you know, do ask them the question, what can I do for you? Right. Mm-hmm. Like the reciprocity, I think is that is where women shine. We yes. think about that a lot. Mm-hmm. And so that is a way that we can, that's our emotional intelligence, right? It's like, it is the leading from the back of the pack. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yes. So good. Oh my goodness. Yes. I don't want to stop this conversation. <laughs> you know, Alice, I, I love what you said in your answer to one of the questions about um, really kind of honing in on what you want from, um, from your sponsor or from your, your mentor and not having it just be like, let's go out for coffee. You know, I oh, know yeah. it, you know, we're all busy, really busy and having kind of an un structured relationship start that just feels like to be honest it's going to like drag you down and and through mm-hmm. it, not that it will but just you know when you know you add one thing to all of our schedules and it will not mine but yours <laughs> you know and it's going to be a lot but the idea of connecting on a, on a shared passion um, and, and really having it meld with what's already going on in that person. I'm not really articulating this very well, but you did in your, uh, your answer, you know, it's, yeah. it's really gotta be, you know, like the whole thing about if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. I mean, that's how I kind of feel about relationships that are mutually giving to each part party. That's what this is all about, you know, and mm-hmm. I, and I think that's what I was alluding to in terms of what Lupe and I are going to talk about is, you know, people look at us and, and want us want that mentorship, but we also want to go like, all right, you were born in like 1980. Like, what does the world look like for you? I need to understand it. So there's a reciprocity there that I think is very valuable. Yeah, I think I can put a little bit of context around the the coffee part of that because that was in the some notes that we had had before. So one of the things that happens a lot when you are a person who's known or well, it, you know, a person of influence is people reach out and they just kind of say, "Can we get coffee sometime?" And can I pick your brain? Can I pick it? That's the other one. I know Katie's cracking up. Yeah, <laughs> we've had this conversation too. And- And it's just, it's such a weak way to start a conversation because like, you know, why should that person do that? Why should they give up their precious hour, half an hour? And I think you need to set that stage for them. You know, think about, you know, how can you reach out to them in a way that A, is not just asking for their precious time. Like, can you offer them something of value? Maybe you saw a cool article that is relevant to something they're working on. You could share that. And start right. to build a relationship. It's a little bit sales 101, right? Like you don't want to reach out and just do this kind of lame, cold, hey, you want to buy something? Um, <laughs> you want to <laughs> build well, a relationship. Y- yes. And I mean, we, the very first woman up, I mean, this is like going back, but I mm-hmm. did a, I did the talk on mentorship and I have this full list and it was things that you can do to say thank you to a mentor, like recommend them for an award, like a leadership award, um, you know, recommend them as a speaker, uh, write a LinkedIn review on how amazing, amazing they were in helping you achieve a goal. Like there are some free things, people that you can, it just, it's about taking the time. 
right? Yeah. It's about yeah. slowing down and taking the time. And one of the one of the hacks that I did on uh, have done on my schedule is after I go to a conference, I'm always meeting people at conferences, whether it's virtual or not. And I always schedule an hour the next day to follow up with everyone. I was like, oh my God, we need to connect. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that kind of thing. And then I always will do a couple testimonials for the people who spoke, right? Nice. But I have to intend- That only takes you an hour? <laughs> it only takes me an hour. No, because I uh, I have a formula. Of uh, course you do. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, I choose three words that describe how their, their talk made me feel and write one or two sentences. I mean, it doesn't take a long time, right? Love that. Well, I think I you can, you get past the, I should do that. I will do that. But you you have a formula to do it. Yeah. Don't I mean, shoot on yourself. Stop. And it's shooting. not going to take six hours and yeah. be this perfection and lengthy for everyone. It's, I just want to touch you and tell you how you made me feel and move on. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And the feeling that you create, the, the, the vibration, the higher vibration that you, that then is exchanged between you and that other person is magnificent. And you feel good hitting publish or send and they feel like 10 times that on their side mm-hmm. because oh, right, someone yes. took this. I mean, we all have experienced it. Oh, yeah. Like so and so recommended you on LinkedIn. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, we can all do that for the people in our lives, right? And and it's honestly like it's a great way to get on people's radar. Like if oh, you see God. a speaker that you really right. want to have a conversation with, like maybe a potential sponsor. Maybe a potential sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be a great first outreach, right? Yes. Yes. So now okay. it may be time to say, Alice, is there something else that we haven't covered that you'd like to um, kind of wrap up with? Anything that of interest? Um, you know, there was something that uh, we should maybe just talk about briefly. And Deborah, you might want to take this a certain direction. But, um, you know, I'm a founding limited partner of a venture fund called How Women Invest. And our whole thing is that we invest in women-led, women-founded businesses. And and there's more criteria than that. But anyway, the idea here is that we have this big problem where venture money is not going to women founders. It's minuscule, the percentage. And sadly, it has gone down over the last couple of years. Less money is going to women founders, which is crazy because this probably sounds a little outrageous, but it's true, women-led businesses tend to perform better and give better returns faster to their investors. So um, part of the reason for that is that the people that are on the other side of the table trying to decide where the money goes, it's men who don't understand. Think about some of these businesses, like um, perhaps you remember Bumble, which is this dating app sort of oriented towards women. She had this incredible exit, I think, last year. How many men passed on that investment opportunity because they can't get into the mind of a woman? It's crazy. So yeah. Um, yeah. so I think that's really interesting to just sort of think about the power that you have with your financial wealth. You know, use that in a way that lifts other women up and find find ways to do that. And, you know, if you want to learn about the How Women Invest Fund, they are they started a second fund. It's kind of need a lot of cash to get in, but, but there's other funds like that. And there's other ways to do that. Um, and it's, it's fun learning about venture anyway. So (laughs) it is, well, you know, something, when you were talking, I was like, you know, it's interesting. So many of the, uh, female founder businesses that kind of popped up during the pandemic, at least in my Instagram stream, were all celebs. Mm. And, and like they have the cash, they have the, the, the social capital and the celebrity to get either fund it themselves or they're known right to the point of if a man doesn't, if, if they're sitting there and they don't understand your language, because of course they haven't surrounded themselves with diverse voice. And then you're selling something that has nothing to do with them. They're like, oh, yeah. like mm-hmm. it's, it's flying right through them. So I think that again, your, your advice to, you know, find those women who are already at the table, find those men who are looking to have converse, more conversations with that diverse thought. Uh, and like things like Elevest comes to mind. Elevest yep. is a 
great place right. to plug right. in locally. Um, our, our group here in Seattle, it's, it's fire and it, you know, it's not expensive to plug in at the very basic level and you start to get comfortable with the lingo. Cause mm-hmm. I think that's, you know, that is not our language in general as women. And so they kind of put it in a place where it's like, oh, okay, I get it. All right. So that's what it means to like divest or, or, mm-hmm. or, you know, shift funds. Like what are these things? They help you get confident. Um, I, what else, what else is out there? Ladies that the, well, of course, Elizabeth's group that, um, uh, oh my gosh. Her name, the, the name just flew out, out of my head. Um, invest her real estate, mm-hmm. invest her the community mm, they talk yes. a lot about like pooling and they do what you're talking about, Alice, but for her houses, like their women get oh. together and pool their money and purchase homes. Uh-huh. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of, I think we just have to start great resources questions. out there that we don't tap into, right. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and it doesn't take that much to find it. And, or to look yeah. to, to tap into the community and say, do you know X? Do you know Y? Do you know Z? So that, I, I think that's a really good point, Alice. Yeah. And I mean, I'll just offer this too. And I don't know if they all do that, but I do think a lot of times these gender lensed venture funds, they build a community around them because they know that, you know, this is new for a lot of women and people are in a learning space. So it's also kind of a cool way to build your network. Um, like how women invest has a slack workspace and, you know, people are putting opportunities out there and things like that. So, um, it's worth looking into, um, for all kinds of reasons. Oh, I love that. We'll be sure to share, of course, share the links in, uh, in here, Mm -hmm. you know, in the comments, but also in the recap blog post, because I think that, you know, there's somebody who's listening today who's thinking, I'm still at the mentor. I need to find a mentor. Come next Wednesday. We'll talk more about that. There's people who are like ready to find their sponsor, who are ready to get, who are ready to take their rightful seat at the board right. table. Right. right. And, and then we have women who are there who are like, where do I put my money now? Like mm-hmm. I have money to invest. And so I think it's, it, it really is the, the, the ultimate Thing that we're saying to everyone is speak your truth. Where are you in that flow? And we can help plug you into the people and the resources in the communities that will help you right where you are. Right. Um, so don't be afraid to say, this is what I need. Right. Right. Really good. Amen. Yeah. All right. Uh, any, any last words, anyone before we, we wrap up here? Or good. I, Alice, I, I just, I just want to say kudos to you for a few months ago saying I'm burned out. <laughs> I want to do something different and really, you know, having the ability and wonderful that you did, you know, to yeah. start painting and writing and enjoying your family and, and all of those things. It's just, um, I think that's just a lesson for everyone, you know, is that sometimes, and even if you can't step back a hundred percent, maybe you can pull back just a little and have that be okay. Not only okay, but necessary. So thank you for, yeah. for telling us that part of it. Uh, oh yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad you see it that way. I mean, the, I think the pandemic puts a lot of pressure on a lot of us, right. And we have to make space for self-care and that can look a lot of different ways. I mean, I took maybe a little bit of an extreme approach. But. <laughs> and I also think it's a reminder, right? Like I, I was, I was just having this conversation with Jordan. So Jordan, if you're watching, this is about us. It's like, we need to react and, and change the way we are working, right? Because it's not working. It is not working. I mean, if you think about like the burnout and the, what the pandemic has, has, has at least the silver lining of it has given us this great power to reset our work, our lives, our, and how we work, right? I, I, that, that keeps coming up for me. And as businesses, as corporate America, as real estate companies, I think we, we have a, a tremendous power to provide a empathetic, collaborative environment. Amen. Can you imagine, I was just imagining here, like if we had a bank of minutes in each one of the technology platforms we could use for work. And after we use those, it was done. (laughs) 
<laughs> like how productive we would be to get all of our work done before that, those, that bank of hours was just done. Right. Mm-hmm. I think, cause it's the unlimited feeling of mm-hmm. time that people just continue to keep working. And if I know I only have this much time left, I'm going to get my stuff done so that I can actually live. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I think be- you could do that, like turn on the child settings on your iPhone. Yes. Well, there are like, there are totally <laughs> apps up. Like that. Yeah. Your time is up. You can't get any you from your to- parents. No more. <laughs> no more TikTok. <laughs> no more TikTok. Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 ladies. This was so great. Alice, thank you so much. I mean, we knew we were going to have a fun conversation, but this was explosive and heart filling and just so beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, oh good to see you. you. Yes. Oh, yes. Totally. Um, For those of you who are watching live or catching the replay, don't forget to register for the wisdom series session next week, all about the life-changing power of mentoring. That's Pat and Aisha, Lupe and Natalie are all going to circle around our woman up table and have a conversation about finding and becoming that life-changing mentor for each other. And so uh, I am womanup.com slash wisdom series is where you can register for that on zoom. We will be there next Wednesday at 2 PM. Uh, until then enjoy the weekend ahead. Hopefully you'll find some beautiful time with your family and friends and beloveds and nature and all of the things until then. See you later. Bye. Hi everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thanks everyone. <laughs>